I'm Sarah Petchka and I'm with Save the Children Action Network. Today I want to talk about something that's actually really simple in the midst of a lot of confusion and challenging times. And that's the need to invest in childcare. Now, you might be thinking, okay, with everything going on, childcare, really? And I'm here to tell you yes. Even if you aren't a parent or a provider, or you know a parent or provider, childcare affects our economy in a big way, and it probably affects your day-to-day -day life. Right now, the childcare industry contributes approximately $100 billion to our economy, and it's allowing our essential workers to do just that, work. If they didn't know that they had a safe place that their children could go during the day, they might not be able to provide the essential services that we so badly need right now. Which is why I'm going to take a second to pause and ask that you please visit SaveTheChildrenActionNetwork.org and learn how you can ask your members of Congress to support the Child Carers Essential Act. Welcome back. I want to take a second to talk about why child care is so important and why we need early learning. A lot of it boils down to the fact that a child's brain is mostly developed by the time they turn five. And research shows that investments in quality early learning, such as quality pre-K, home visiting, and of course, childcare, is one of the most effective ways to end the cycle of poverty. It also shows that children who are enrolled in these programs are 20% more likely to graduate high school and they earn, on average, a 50% higher income down the road. Two out of five children in the U.S. do not have access to high quality learning, and that was before the coronavirus. As I'm sure you can guess, the COVID-19 crisis has had a real impact on the childcare industry. Those who have had to close have had to do so because of low enrollment rates, they couldn't pay their staff, they couldn't pay their fixed costs, they didn't have access or couldn't find cleaning supplies, and so they've had to shut their doors, and for some this will be permanent. Those who are open, or who are considering reopening, are facing so many stressors, from again, in reduced enrollment rates to how do they keep their staff safe? If it's an in-home provider, how do they keep their home safe, their family safe? And you know, where do they find cleaning supplies? And I think the biggest one, personally, is they have to figure out how to keep children at a social distance. They have to figure out how to keep toddlers, kids, babies away from each other, which just is a Herculean task. But in all seriousness, a lot of these changes are really overwhelming to the already overworked providers, and it could result in the whole industry being financially unsound. And that will have a huge ripple impact for families across the U.S. It will especially impact those who live in rural areas or those who live in low-income areas because they already struggle to find high-quality education, early childhood education for their children. With all of these closures, they might not have any readily available or available at all. It will also disproportionately affect families of color. You see, right now, the childcare industry employs approximately 1.5 million people and 40% or more of those people are women of color. We need to support childcare. We need to make sure that it stays afloat. So if I've scared you into taking action, as I hope I have, then now what? What do we do about it? There is some good news. Recently, Congress passed the CARES Act stimulus package, which provided $3.5 billion to assist the childcare industry. And the other good news is that there are a lot of people who agree with you and me on this issue. A recent poll from Save the Children Action Network and Child Care Aware found that a whopping 87% of Americans, which includes 82% of Republicans, 94% of Democrats, are in support of government financial assistance to child care providers. All we have to do is act. And to do so, we need to let our members of Congress know that we support the Child Care is Essential Act. Now, in short, this act will create 50 billion funds within the existing Child Care Development Block Grant. So what is this? <laughs> These grants 
would ensure that providers can pay for fixed costs and it would also help them get cleaning supplies, get safety equipment, make sure that they can keep their doors open for American families. Look, I know that there's a lot going on right now, but if you take a moment, and it will just take a few minutes, to visit SaveTheChildrenActionNetwork.org, fill out your information and send a message to your members of Congress, it will make a huge difference. It will let them know that this issue matters to us. Another way to do that is by calling your members of Congress. This is a really effective way to say, I, your constituent, care about this issue and I want you to vote on it. Additionally, you can help by spreading the word. The word of mouth is so important, and if we let our friends and family know that this issue is happening, it's happening now, we need to take action now, we can get more voices to our members of Congress and encourage them to act. So, where have we landed? We need childcare, we know that. It's important for our economy, it's important for so many families, and we need to make sure that our members of Congress hear us. Please take action today. Please call your members of Congress today. And in spite of everything that's going on, I think we can make a big difference for kids.